This is the Lights Out Boxing Podcast, proudly sponsored by Spartans. This is Ricky the Hitman Atten, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Fessel Khan for Lights Out, proudly sponsored by Spartans Law, and this is podcast 46 of the Lights Out Boxing Podcast. Delighted to be joined by a special guest today, Thank all you. the way from, well, my hometown and his hometown as well, Luton Town, Mr. Sakib Mahmood, yeah. the National Youth Development Champion. Thank Sakib, you. afternoon, bro. Afternoon to you. How you been? I'm all right, brother. How you doing? Yeah, I'm okay. Just doing the same old life as a national champion now. Life yeah. must be different since you won that national title, right? I thought it would have been different, but it's the same old loot and the same old stuff. <laughs> um, just before we get started and before we dive straight into the podcast, uh, just a quick few reminders out there. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button for more Lights Out Boxing content. Um, and if you want to listen to this podcast and any of the audio platforms, they're going to be below in the description. More importantly, uh, we'll be sharing Sakib's um, social media platforms as well in the description. Uh, we've done an interview before as well with Sakib, so that'll be below in the description. So keep an eye on Sakib. Um, big things to come for Sakib going into the near future. Hopefully he's going to turn pro soon, become a world soon, champion, soon, represent the town of Luton, bring the world title back to Luton. It's going to be a very long time since we've had a world title in Luton. I don't think we've uh, actually had a. Billy Schwer sure won an IBO. He won the IBO, yes, yeah, probably. But you're going to win it all, right? Hopefully soon, inshallah. You know, bit by bit, slowly, slowly, we'll get them all. We'll inshallah. get them all back to Luton. Well, fingers crossed because Luton definitely needs a, yeah. a world champion. Um, obviously, w- w- the main aim for today is to talk a bit about yourself. We done yeah. an interview, I believe, about a month ago. Yeah. We spoke about you winning the National Youth Development Championship. But what I want to do today is just kind of like get to know you a bit more yeah. before you start in boxing. What the plans are in the future? A bit about who Sakib really is. Yeah. That's all right with you, yeah. yeah that's okay. Yeah. Um, but as we normally do with each podcast, we kind of have a quick mention on the current boxing scene. Um, it got announced, uh, well, yesterday that the fight between Chris Eubank Jr. and Liam Williams yes. is going to go ahead for February the 15th in Cardiff. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that fight? I think that's going to be probably the one of the fight of the years. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to, because their, their styles are go forward, mm. go at it. They both, I don't want to say with egos, but they both, they don't want to back down from each other. You know, there's a bit of rivalry between them, a bit of bad blood. And they, but their style for both of them is to go forward and essentially brawling type of ways, but um, Eubank has been training with Roy Jones, mm-hmm. so I like to see how his boxing skills are going to help him because you know when Liam Williams he fought Andrade he had a lot of you know trouble trying to pin Andrade because Andrade was so slick while he was moving. So if um, Eubank has done anything with Roy Jones in terms of moving around and trying to box, I think he could have success and um, he's got a good engine on him. So I think maybe it's a good fight between them both, but. I think Eubank could nick it. Do you know, it's, it's good that you mentioned about um, Eubank training with Roy Jones Jr. Because Liam Williams, um, for the last, I believe, three or four years, has been with Dominic Ingle, but now yeah. he's moved over to Adam Booth. Um, yeah. You know how important it is to get a good training camp. Do you think it's the right move to have made a jump from uh, Dominic Ingle to Adam Booth when arguably it's probably the biggest fight of his career, given the fact that he's just lost the world title fight? Yeah, I don't think that was probably the best move, considering how close he actually is to the fight. He should, if he wanted to change training, he should have done it a while ago. Mm-hmm. Maybe straight after while he, if he went to, straight after he lost to Andrade. But the fact that he did it quite close to his fight, I don't know. You know, you're gonna learn new things, but to implement them into a fight straight away with a with a new trainer is gonna be hard. Like Chris Eubank, he got his new trainer. He trained through lockdown, and he only showed in his first fight. I think it was against Marcus Morrison. He mm. only showed a bit of what he had learned. Some glimpses of what yeah. he's, what he's capable. And slowly, of. slowly, he's showing a bit more. He's had another fight recently, and obviously now he's gonna fight. We're gonna see a bit more of what he's been learning, but with Williams, I don't think he's gonna be able to show everyone what he's actually learning right now. I think it's just gonna kick in what he's learned for the past couple of years with uh, with Ingle. You know, uh, when people speak about Chris Eubank Jr., a lot of people they say he's so so talented. You know, he's got the right tools. But why do you think he hasn't reached the uh, you know reached the world title, you know, be, be gone on to that sort of next level. He fights, he fights a very tough weight, but there's obviously a lot of world champions. You know, he lost to Billy Joe, who's champion at his weight, Andrade, Golovkin. I think he's, he's a very good boxer, but sometimes I think, like, um, his ego gets a bit in the way. You know, like, he, he should have, he should have, he be, should be stepping up the fights quite a long time ago. You know, this Liam Williams should have fight should have happened a couple of years ago. He's still on domestic level. In my opinion, like he hasn't gone, f- tried to go for the world level, and I think he should have been pushed on for harder fights when he was a bit younger. But he's he's wasted a lot of time in my opinion. I don't think he's ever going to reach world level mm-hmm. because I just don't think he has the. He's very one-dimensional, you know. 
But maybe we'll see what he's learned with Roy Jones. If he's learned how to box more, and he can add that with his engine, and you know when he comes forward, I think yeah he could cause problems at the top of the top of the weight division. But right now I don't see him getting near that. I just don't think he's got the well, tools for it. It's good that you mentioned that there's so many um, world elite fighters at 160, and of course 168, yeah. which he's spoken about perhaps going up to and I think he's what 32 years of age now and I made a point when the fight was made that to be 32 years of age and fighting at British domestic level kind of tells you that yeah. his career hasn't yeah, gone yeah. as he planned but I think what you got to remember is is that and I don't know obviously how much your father played has played in your career so far but I don't think his old man who was a great fighter one of Britain's greatest ever yeah. in my opinion I don't think the link up that they had during the start of his career benefited him yeah I think that wasted a lot of time early on in his career you know because his dad used to be in his corner and there's so many famous clips of his dad just staring at him in the corner not mm. even giving him advice I think that that halted him a bit from reaching his potential he had a lot of potential even now he still has a lot of potential but now He's 32, you know, how many years you got left at top level in boxing? You ain't got a lot left, mm -hmm. you know. He should have been doing this when he was about 27, 28 at this level right now, domestic level. But I think the he, he should have, you know, got a proper trainer instead of spending time with your dad. Yeah, your dad's, you know, one of the greatest best boxers, world champion. But sometimes the world champion boxers might not be the best of coaches. We've seen that. And um, I think he should have got to a proper trainer when he was much younger and I think he would have been pushing even more now. He would have been, you know, he could have been hitting world level at this age. Mm -hmm. There's another fight that's been mentioned and it looks quite likely to happen is um, Canelo versus Jamal Charlo. Now, a few months ago, the WBC made an announcement that Canelo can go up to cruiserweight, cruiserweight yeah. and uh, take on Ilunga Makabu for the WBC cruiserweight title. That never really sat right with me because, listen, don't get me wrong, is, is, is it a big fight? It's, it's, it's Canelo. It's always a big fight yeah. regardless of who he fights. But I felt it was a bit disrespectful to the rest of the division of the cruiserweight to the cruiserweight division to have a, another guy just come up two weights and then all of a sudden get a world title shot. Yeah. But it doesn't look like that fight's going to happen, but now it looks like he's going to take on Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo. Another fighter that who's um, undefeated, you yeah. know, he's won the world title. Yeah. But it's just like, I don't know, like, has he really achieved anything great in his career apart Literally. from winning a world title? Like, are there any big say. names on his, on his CV right yeah. now? You see, the younger Charlo... Jam he, uh, Jamel. Jamel, Jamel, yeah, I, I like him so much more than the elder one. Mm -hmm. The reason why I don't like the elder one as much, he's a very good technical boxer, very good skills, he's got power as well, he can crack. But, you see, he calls out all these big names, he wants Golovkin, he wants Canelo, and he talks about, you know, how he's this and he's that, but he's, no offence to him, but he's never proved it mm -hmm. at, in, at any well. He hasn't fought a well, well level fighter. His best fight was against that guy um, who Golovkin fought, what was his name? When was this? I forgot his name, the one that Golovkin fought for the IBF. Um, was it the Polish guy? Polish or Russian. But either way, he's not had a big fight. He's though, not had he? a big fight. And I think Canelo's been there, done that with the best. He, if you look at Canelo's resume, it's all top fighters, undefeated fighters. Especially if you look at the last 12 months, yeah, three of the four fights. He's I think, yeah. All, all undefeated world champions. Who's, he's who's Charlo fought? Literally, I think Dennis Hogan or something like that was his recent one. I think, I, honestly, I think Canelo gets him out of there. You think Canelo stops him? Quite comfortably. Do you think it's the right fight given the fact that where Canelo is right now? Would you not have liked it? Wouldn't the fight be at middleweight? I think it's going to be at 168. Because, 168. I think, uh, because I think Canelo would probably struggle to go down to 160 now because he's fought at 168. He's fought at 175, which is light heavyweight. Doesn't Charlo have the 160 belt? I think if the fight's at super middleweight, I think he'll have to vacate. Have to vacate, but then what's in it for Canelo? Because there's no belt. What's in it? Payday. Payday, but... but yeah. One, one thing I have to ask you is though, right? Where where Canelo is right now, yeah. given the fact of what he's achieved over the sort of like the last twelve months, yeah, um, he's beaten Callum Smith, Avni Yildirim, Bill Joe Saunders, and Caleb Plant, and he's become yeah. the undisputed super middleweight champion. Do you think that's the the perfect fight for him right now? Was there perhaps maybe no, another opponent you would have like to have seen him in? I with? think yeah, bigger and better fight. I like to see him. I know he's done a lot of super middleweight, but I think he goes to light heavyweight. Not, yeah. maybe not to cruiserweight, but I think he goes to light heavyweight. I he's like, won a world title at light yeah, heavyweight that, as well. But he did that against someone who, you know, who is... To be honest, the light heavyweight division is very strong, but a lot of them are on their way out. Like, the, the, a lot of them are old. Yeah, yeah I think... I want to see Canelo against uh, Bivol. Yeah, that'd be a good fight. A great fight. I think Canelo could win. And if Canelo got that world title... I'd love to see him fight Baterbium. You know, given the fact on watching um, Bivol's performance against Richards... Yeah. Craig Richards when they fought uh, last summer 
I'm not that confident that Bivol beats Canelo, but I think yeah. better be of watching his last fight against Marcus Brown yeah, he's and crazy. the power that he's, he's got. Crazy power. I think that's a great fight. Yeah, I think that's, that'll be one of the best fights for Canelo, but I think to jump into that, uh, the Paterbia fight straight away, I don't think that'd be the best thing for him to do. Mm-hmm. I think maybe get Bivol, get the world title, make it even more of a bigger fight, like a unification type of fight against Paterbia, but I think he should go to Bivol first. I don't think he should go to Cruiserweight. It's crazy when they talk about Canelo because, you know, Obviously, the the talk of going up to cruiserweight was one thing, but then he's openly admitted he'd, he'd go up to heavyweight and fight someone like Usyk. Yeah, he's... I mean, I've had this discussion with a lot of people over the last couple of months, ever since he beat Caleb Plant. Where do you rank Canelo in terms of all-time greats? Do you have him up there? Would you yes, say Yes, hundred percent. You know, people won't admit it now. Like if you say, yeah, people would admit that he's one of the greatest of our generation, but they'll never admit that he's one of the greatest of all time because of his um his defeat to Mayweather. People, you know. Nowadays, a defeat in boxing is everyone takes it like you know they're not good enough. Mm. But, but I, there's no harm in losing. There's no harm in losing. Everyone's losing. But um, I think personally, right now, if you see what he's done, the way he's unifying these weight divisions, if he can unify unify like heavy, I think he's one. He's top five as boxer of all time. You reckon top five? Top five quite comfortably. Who's too. your top five? I know I put you on the spot, but if you had to like, uh, May- May- five, Mayweather is the best by uh, far. I agree with that as well. Yeah, Mayweather is the best. Then you see with like this, there's other there's boxers who have done a lot out of the ring as well. Like you know people like Muhammad Ali, mm-hmm. yeah, people like Mike Tyson achieving what he did at such a young age, becoming a world champion. I don't know, was it twenty? Yeah, I think it's eighteen. Eighteen, nineteen. Youngest world that. weight champion of all time. He's doing that, and I'm competing in amateurs. You see, <laughs> I'm fighting in championships, and he was winning world titles. He was getting trained by Costa yeah. Mara, and look how. Quickly, he was pushed. He was a yeah. wrecking machine. Yeah, there's people like that who have shaped boxing into what it is now, and then there's people who have just been like, like people like um, Manny Pacquiao, very good boxer. Eight, eight divisions. Eight divisions. Yeah, no, it's no crazy. one's ever, no one's ever gonna do that. No, no I don't way. think any. I don't, I don't see someone like who would it be? Someone like Inui mm. stepping up all the way to light, light middle, winning yeah. the world title. That's not gonna happen. Crazy. So someone like Manny Pacquiao doing that. They have to be top five, one of the best boxers of all time. So you've got in your top five, you've got um, Mayweather, Ali, Tyson, Canelo, Pacquiao. Would you say roughly? If yeah, you had because, to pick a top five because obviously these, these these other boxers, you know, Hands and Sugar Ray Leonard, but yeah. I didn't really watch them. You know, I'll be honest, I didn't really watch them. I wasn't in that time. Mm. I'm in the time now, and I but I still think if Canelo can unify like heavyweight, he'll he'll surpass them because. He's a small. He's not a big guy. He's literally like five eight. He started mm. off at light middle, light middle, and now there's talk of him going to heavyweight to fight UC. It's crazy in the future. Oh, proper and crazy. He, and I think what well, he's the only day, 31, 32, I think. Still very young. He's still yeah. got a couple of years and left in his. Do you know? I think I said I've said this to a lot of people. The best thing that happened to him was that lost to Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Because he improved massively from it, and if you, the, I just think he's the, the guy's not human. To, yeah. to beat three world champions, undefeated world champions in yeah. the space of a year. Yeah. It just tells you that the guy is just on another level. And you know, one what, one thing I really love about him is his dedication and commitment to the yes, sport. He, he's just on another level. He works so hard. You know, he's, I've, you know, even the little clips on you know social media, he posts, that guy works like he has nothing. The guy works like he's fighting for his first world title. To keep that motivation up in your life when you've achieved so much as a sport mm. and you've literally got everything you want in your life, he's probably living the best life. All the money, everything. He's the boxing's biggest star right now. Mm-hmm. To have that motivation, fighting, fight. Even in, even when he's fighting someone like Yildirim, who's Yildirim to him? Exactly. But he still took it seriously. Still took the still... fight. Still took it seriously. Still showed respect. Still got the job done. Mm-hmm. Every single fight, he has that motivation to still go. And that's what I'm saying. Like he's achieved so much, and the fact that he's willing to take these risks. Like no, this this fight is calling him out. Like example, Charlo, Andrade, all these people, but they haven't taken risks like him. Mm-hmm. You know, the risk that he's taken unifying all these divisions, fighting all these undefeated fighters, it just shows you what type of boxer he is and what type of mentality he has with his with his career and the way he takes fights, how serious he takes them, and how he still has that hunger and that drive to train every single day to become he wants to become the best Mexican of all time. The best Mexican of all time, probably the greatest of all time. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah. Let's say Floyd obviously went fifteen oh when he fought Conor, Conor McGregor, which was uh, Whatever way you see it, you'd rather he fought someone else. But let's yeah. say he fought, instead of Floyd fighting Conor McGregor at that time, he fought Canelo in 2017 when that fight was. How do you think that fight would have panned out? Do you think Canelo, Canelo would have beaten him or do you no. think Floyd's... 
I said, I still don't think. I said, people, people, I just didn't. Floyd was on love. He could literally, whatever you have in your style, he could take that and he use that against you. That's a hard thing. Like, imagine you, you train something for your whole life, you're good at it, you're a world champion at it, but you're fighting another man and you literally cannot do that in any single way because he's literally piecing you. Look what he did to Manny Pacquiao. It was, mm. Look what Manny Pacquiao do, was doing after that when he's 40, he's fighting Thurman and he's dropping Thurman and he's bullying him. Mm -hmm. You see, like, it's a lot of, just I think a lot of people say now, oh, Canelo now would beat Floyd. A lot of people say that now, but they're not even the same weights. No, they're not. The, I think well, the, if you, you can't at, compare that. If you look at Floyd in his last exhibition fight, and then you look at Canelo in his yeah. last fight, they're just they're, complete different ways. Right. I mean, Floyd right now probably wouldn't make one four seven, and obviously there's yeah. nothing bad about that because he's not had a competitive fight yeah. since 2017, but. And then you got Canelo just yeah. going all the way up to what cruiserweight, possibly heavyweight. Cruiserweight, I, yeah. I mean, what weight would you even make that fight at? And it's a massive unfair yeah. advantage if that fight ever did happen. Yeah, again. there's no way Canelo's going under 160. I want to speak to you quickly before we speak a bit about yourself. Was another thing that came out during this week was um, Floyd Mayweather set to have another yeah, exhibition, exhibition fight. Against money kicks. Money kicks. That Rashid guy. Rashid yeah, Bell I mean, Hansel. I think we've, you've now got to a stage where you have to accept it. The guy's making it's ridiculous amount one. of money for. Yeah exhibition fights and this one looks as if it's going to take place in Dubai the last one was against Logan Paul people obviously have their opinion about these exhibition fights and the fact that he's making ridiculous amount of money but yeah. what's your thoughts on it? you can't hate someone for making hundreds of millions just for fun do you think it's just jealousy or do you think it's just a lot of people hate on him because they'd love to be in that position I'd love to fight Rashid <laughs> Bel Hassan top of the Burj Khalifa on the helipad for a couple hundred mil mm. who, who wouldn't let's be honest of course every boxer in their career there's there's What's that guy's name? Breedis. Marius Breedis. He got a just to fight Jake Paul. Yes. Yeah, just... Jake Paul ain't going to fight him. I wasn't a fan of that. that, see, that, that yeah, too. you see what I mean? So that's that's a Jake Paul payday. Mm -hmm. That's probably a couple mil. But imagine you're fighting money kicks for a couple hundred million. I'd love to do that. This guy know. financially took boxing to another level as well. Yes, you can't yeah. disagree with that. Yeah, he changed the sport completely. Everyone, a lot of people now, they, they don't... A lot of people back in the day, you would take fights for their legacy. But now they... They choose what fights they want based on what, how it helps them financially. Because of what's gone on with the pandemic and COVID, and yeah. you know fighters getting less opportunities, you know, and obviously there's not a lot of money being pumped into boxing right yeah. now. I've, I've asked this question to a lot of fighters in the early stages of this, Chris. I've got, I have to ask it to you, like, when you see these type of fights happening, when you see people like Jake Paul fighting and getting a massive fortune. Yeah. Not, I wouldn't say does it upset you, but does it not make you think like, is there a hope? for a future in boxing for people like yourself and in terms of other people sort of pumping money into the sport it goes both ways because people like that they bring a lot of eyes to the sport of boxing and, and a lot more eyes mean more people are going to see me and then when they see you know talent and they see skill and you know they see my videos then there's more eyes on me so you see when it when the Someone like Jake Paul, mm -hmm. all these people they bring more eyes to the sport you know more popularity more fans will be more into boxing and when people see like my videos on my skins, at the end of the day, I'm gonna get more. I'm gonna get more fans. You know, my fan base is gonna get bigger, more popularity. Everyone's gonna see me, and so in that way, it's good that these people are coming into boxing. But at the same time, you know, they do mock it, like you know, Jake Paulie call, calling that Canelo, Canelo kill him, calling that Can Kamaru Usman and Jorge Masvidal yeah, and they, Nate they Diaz. Do, but at the end of the day, that it just shows you how how much money boxing does have. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these UFC people who want to go into boxing because that's where the money is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it. It damages boxing in a certain way. To sh you know, a guy like Jay Paul, he's headlining these big shows and the world champions under him. Mm -hmm. But then it brings a lot of pay-per-views. It brings a lot of limelight. You know, more eyes onto boxing, which is end of the day is the best thing. Everyone boxing wants to be more well known in the world. So end of the day is why not? If he's doing something good, like at first I used to hate it. You know, I used to hate it so much. Mm -hmm. When he fought Ben Askren and he was getting so much popularity from knocking Ben Askren out. But um, someone like me who watches UFC knows how bad Ben Askren actually is at stand-up. But with the recent Tyron Woodley fight, the, the rematch, I didn't really have a problem with that. He was doing okay. Knocked him out. But yeah, knocked him out horribly, didn't Knocked him out horribly. A lot of people saying it's staged, but I don't think it was. One second one. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, well, at, at the end of the day, you can't knock the guy. Yeah, he's doing what he wants to do. It's sort it? of like bringing a, a different path into into boxing, which 
whether you like it or not, some people are some people are for it, some people are against it. I do think that it is a shame that nobody wants to pump that type of money into fighters that are sort of sort of yeah. coming up now. And I think it's also a shame that the amateurs ain't getting that recognition that they deserve as well. Because if in my opinion, if you pump money into amateur boxing and fighters at the early stages of their career, they will develop into becoming such better fighters. Yeah. That's what I personally think. There's, there's a lot of talent in there when it comes to amateur boxing. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to win titles because there's so many. I know I've seen so many great bouts, and it's it's like the early start, it's early um, fights of the nationals. Like two uh, England boys are fighting in the quarterfinals, mm-hmm. and then these find another England boy. There's just literally so much talent in it in England boxing nowadays. In amateurs, I think if it was more money was pumped in today, you know, get these people more out 100%, there. Hundred percent, exactly. They do so much better. The better recognition, uh, the better it is for, for young fighters like yourself. Um, Let's talk a bit about you now. Um, yeah. Obviously, we've done an interview a few weeks ago. I spoke to you about winning the National yeah. Youth Development Champion, but we didn't really like kind of go too deep in, yeah. into like your background. You're from Luton, like myself. Um, yeah. Why boxing? How old was you when you wanted to, when you realised Bo- boxing was going to be the way forward? For you? Boxing's always been stuck in my family. You know, fighting. I've got two elder brothers who did boxing for since I was since they did it for a good seven eight years. One of my brothers had a couple of fights. My eldest brother had a couple of fights. He didn't really pursue it, but my other brother, he had about 60, 70 fights, amateur fights. He's very well known as an amateur in uh, Luton, even in England. Never got, you know, a, a, some sort of title, but he fought so many national champions and he beat them. He's very well known, but um, he stopped boxing and then I, I was never interested into boxing. You see, with me, I just, I, I didn't really like it. Like, I knew the basics and stuff because obviously they taught me from a young age, you know, how to fight, how to throw a jab and a hook, but I hated, like, actually training it. I didn't want to do it at all. But then I used to mess around a lot, like so much in school. So was you a chony boy like myself? No, no, I was for making it. <laughs> oh, I could okay. never be a chony boy. <laughs> never. But yeah, I used to go to school and I used to get into like a lot of fights and stuff. And where it was, well, I was smart, but I didn't know what I wanted to do in life. Like I couldn't, I couldn't see myself. You know, when you get to like year nine, year 10, you're growing a bit older, you know, you've got to think about college and stuff, like GCSEs. And I was thinking like, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life, man. I, I don't want to do a nine to five, man. What is this? And then when my brother stopped boxing, I decided, you know what, let me let me go try this out. Let's see how hard this actually is. So that I remember I went and I thought, you know, this is going to be easy. My hard is you only fighting for three rounds. Mm, I got in easy, there. I regretted it straight <laughs> away. I was like, why am I even here? This is hard. But then you just stick to it. It's always been in my family, especially fighting, man. We mm. used to fight with each other, me and my brothers. It's just it's you- one thing that we're really good at. You won the National Youth Development Championship last year, but you lost your first final, the Junior Championship, didn't yeah. you? See, I mean, obviously, that's one part of boxing where you have to accept losing is always yeah. part of life, whether it's boxing, football, or anything in life. But how did you manage to bounce back from that? Because that must have hit you hard, losing that first final, right? Yeah, it hit me hard because the thing was, I was 9-0 and at the time, so I was undefeated. I never lost a fight. Yeah, and um, I, when I entered the National Tournament at that age, at that time, I didn't really think about like, yeah, I'm in a, I'm in national fight for England. I literally took it one fight at a time, and it was it was quite fun because I was I was winning quite easily. I was winning by I won my first round by stoppage, then I was winning another one next week, and then the week after I'm dropping people. I'm like, this is actually really easy. And then when England boxing, I remember I remember sitting down in Southampton at the venue, and they released like the matrix thing where it has every boy for their weight, and there was literally four boys at 60 kg, and I was one of them, and I was like. Wow, there's literally three of us left. Like, I actually might win this. I had a tough semi final fight. I remember I fought a kid who was a who was MTK champion. He was undefeated. Box as well. champion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was okay. a box cup champion. He had the belt and everything. And um, I remember I fought him and I beat him as well and quite comfortably. They're very highly rated, these MTK yeah, box champions. It's, 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 a hard, it's a hard box cup to win. Mm-hmm. And I remember I, was, I beat him and I'm like, I'm in the final. This is this actually going to be so easy. Like, I'm actually going to win. <laughs> and do you know what the thing was? I was. I was uh, I was just started college at the time, right? Everyone knew I was a boxer, and obviously they're seeing me post stuff every week. Like they probably think, like this guy's the man. And I was winning and winning. I'm like, what? Well, imagine I win national champion. I'm gonna be national champion, undefeated, ten and I'm I'm gonna be the man. When I got there, I got beat. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. Get beat convincingly. Do you no, think you won no, the fight? No, I think I won the fight. Everyone thinks I won the fight. Like you know what? It's, I'm not one. I can. If I lose, I lose, isn't it? It's just if I put everything into it and I lose, then I've lost. What can I? What more can I actually do? But you see, I got out of the ring, and obviously, even if you don't get robbed and you had a close fight, your family and your friends and your coach will say, "Oh, don't worry, man, you won that fight," you know. 
but I'm not lying, there was about 300 people, three, 400 people in that venue, and there was England coaches, and every single person was coming up to me. I'm, I'm not lying, like 100, 200 people were coming up to me saying, I can't believe that actually happened to you. That's a part, of that, that's just a part of boxing though, isn't it? What it was, was at first, I was just like, yeah, I lost, but then when I actually realised, like, these people don't need to come up to me, they, they're never going to see me again in their lives, but the fact that they're coming up to me and saying that I won that fight, it's just like, wow. And then, I wanted a rematch against that guy, but I don't think he boxes anymore. Well, well, maybe one day we'll work. Yeah, we'll, but it's like one, one of them ones, like, I see, I, when it first happened, I saw it in a bad way. Like, I was like, you know what? What the hell, man? I tried mm. so hard. I worked so hard for this. But then when you go older a bit, you realise everything happens for a reason. Exactly, and, yeah. And I realised, like, if I won that fight, I would have been 10 and 0, national champion, just started college, made all, you make all these new friends in college. I would have got distracted. I mm. would have slacked off training. I would have thought, you know, I'm the best, man. Yeah, and it I wouldn't does be, happen, I wouldn't be, especially if you're, you know, if I was doing what I was doing, but like 10 and 0, you've won every fight easily, and it's just like, like, I'm not happy that I lost, but I'm happy that I learned a lot from that loss. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from that loss. I lost two fights. The thing was, um, after that fight, my coach already booked the uh, international to go to Poland for a box cup in okay. three weeks. I didn't want to go after that. So I lost, I was like, you know what, I allow this, I just want to go <laughs> go out with my friends, eat every day, I want to go enjoy myself. So I went to a box cup, literally three weeks after, so I didn't have time to really like think about the loss. Obviously I thought about it, but I didn't have really time to dwell on it, because I still need to train. And then um, I went to Poland, and I remember um, I fought a, what was that fight, I fought like a, he was a Ukrainian boy, but he was Polish champion. These Eastern Europeans are tough, aren't they? Yeah, and he had like 80 bouts. And they, they brought him from a different like city in Poland because he was like, just for me, because they saw I came second. And they tried putting me against him in the first round to try for him to beat me. And I beat him so easily, so, so easily. That's probably my easiest How'd you fight. beat him? Would you just jab his head off? Would you, um, would you, would you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him? No, no, never toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Nah. You know what? That's a question I want to ask you. How do you sort of prepare for amateur fighters? Because, like I mentioned earlier on, yeah. amateur, you don't get a lot of like... A lot of videos, you yeah. know, a lot of recognition for amateur fighters. So, can you can you look, judge a fighter just by looking at about what type of style they're going to have and what type of fight you expect, or is it just a case of stick to what you know, stick to your game plan that should be good enough to beat him? You see, you see, on the day, mm -hmm. you see if he's taller than you, you see if he's smaller than you, and if he's smaller than you, he's not going to try, you know, have his hands down and box you, try to keep you at length bay with a jab. He's going to come forward. If they're taller than you, you know, you're going to have to push forward. But you see what I do in sparring. I spar different people like quite a lot. So I'll, I'll, I'll spar someone way smaller than me for a couple of rounds and then as soon as that's done, I'll, fight, I'll spar someone taller. So I've got to switch up my styles. Or oh, I'll do like, we'll swap midway rounds, then bring a taller guy and a smaller guy. So I've got to change my style. Like, I can't, like with the smaller guy, I have to move around. You know, I have to be on my toes, I have to box him. But with the taller guy, I have to go forward and, you know, bring the fight to him. So one thing that's good about me, I've literally fought, um, I fought a lot of styles. I fought smaller people, taller people. Stronger people, bigger than me, and I've literally, I've always adapted to their style because I'm just used to it. That's the one thing that I can speak highly about when I when I box is I can change my style. Like I could be fighting one round in in an actual fight, and then my second round is completely different from what I was doing, and it completely it throws the opponent off guard. You know, one minute he's boxing me, now he's brawling me. It's completely different. And, and there's no time to adapt the game no plan during the round, is yeah. it? Yeah, and that's one thing. Like I, I. You know, I can adapt to my opponent's style. So I don't really worry about having a game plan. Obviously, there's certain things you do in training which you want to execute in a fight. But I don't worry about, you know, I need to stick to this, I need to stick to that. Whatever my opponent does, I can switch to it mid-fight. So you go to uh, Poland just a few weeks after losing the junior yeah. championships. Then you then you take on this Ukrainian kid. How did the tournament go and how did that fight yeah, with the Ukrainian this was, kid this go? Was even worse. So I beat this guy. And it's just straight after I've, I've lost. I've, so I've just lost the national final and I've beaten the Polish champion with 80 fights and I've only got oh. 9 or 10. And I'm like, you know what? I can put that to the side a bit, you know? I'm in the finals tomorrow and I was fighting some Austrian kid, in it? And the Austrian kid, he should have lost. In the, he should have lost. In the semis. Yeah, but he somehow said, all right, this is going to be easy. And you see me, like, if I show you all my videos, you know when it's like the results and stuff? I'm always quiet. I have my hand up. And if they raise my hand, you know... If it's like a big fight, I'll scream or something. But other than that, yeah. You keep yourself so humble. I keep humble. myself very humble yeah, when it comes yeah. to that. But, so I, I fight this kid, yeah. And this was like, this was the only time ever in all 18 fights that I've literally, when the fight's finished, I'm so confident I've won. I was jumping and everything. And it was a box cup and they said I lost on a split, yeah. 
And then the thing was so mad because obviously I got upset and I was like to myself, I just lost in another final. Like, you know, what the hell is this? And I was, I was, I was crying and I was, bit, I was really upset. But then I remember it was so crazy because um, it was a box cup and they did awards after and best boxer. Somehow me losing in the final and I got best boxer award. Because maybe they probably thought they thought like, that, that that result was something else. How can someone beat me and he not get best boxer award? So best boxing at so the end of the day. You, you lost two finals, but you look back at those two finals, you feel as if you should have won those finals. You feel as if you did enough. The, the, the one in the nationals, that, that's life. And it's, it's, results won't always go your way. The one, like, if someone asked me, you lost, I wouldn't go screaming, yeah, I got robbed, I got robbed. I'd just say, yeah, I lost, man. Fights happen, that's what happens. I understand that your one of your oldest brothers was, unfortunately, he's in prison right now. Yeah. For whatever reasons. But I understand he was super duper talented. Yeah. A lot of people speak very highly about him. Yeah. And do you know what it is? It's, it's really weird because, like, I didn't really go to his fights as much. He used to fight out of town quite a lot. And I've been I mean to, like, I'd say about, he had about 60. I've been mean to a handful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I never I never really paid attention to, you know, his boxing. Like obviously, I knew he did. I knew he was good. But I never, like, watched his videos and stuff like that. Like, I've never done that. But the, the funny thing is, every gym I go in Luton, if I go to a different gym in Luton, if I, if I fight someone and there's Luton people there, they'll come up to me and they'll say, you fight exactly like him. A good thing, yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> obviously, he was so good. And it's like, wow, like, i never seen this guy fight properly. I never, I never watched these videos when I first started saying, you know what, I need to do it like him, I need to do it like that. But somehow we fight the exact same. And obviously he's never seen me fight, but when, we, when I speak to him, he's telling me things that only I understand. And it's bit weird, like, how does he know I'm thinking that? And how does he know that I should be doing that one? He's never seen me fight. And it just, it just shows you, like, as a family, boxing was it's kind of made for us. Mm. And it was really helpful, you know, having a brother like that who's guided me now uh, through amateur boxing like this. Well, obviously, you mentioned when you go to certain gyms, people speak about him and that uh, he had a very good style at boxing. Um, look, people make mistakes. It's part yeah, of life. It's life. Know. It's part of life. Um, but from when I speak to people about him, they say this guy had the skills to go very far in boxing. A crazy talent. So when, when 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 you when you speak to the younger generation these days, because yeah. anyone can make a mistake, yeah. you know, someone's life could change just like that. Yeah. How would you advise the younger generation to stay out of trouble? And how much would you implement boxing to the younger people to get sort of stay away from crap yeah. on the streets and the gym is the place where you should be? I remember I was, I was fighting so much in high school. I remember they went to kick me out and everything. I was fighting every week. And then there was, everyone always used to say boxing teaches you discipline and whatever and so on and so And I just thought, that's a load of crap, man. Boxing didn't teach you nothing, did it? Mm. But then when I got into it, I started doing it. I just, I suddenly just stopped fighting and I carried myself so differently as a different person. Like, comparing how I am now to comparing how I was in school, it's, it's like a different person. And that's because of boxing. Boxing does change a person. It changes how you think about life. Like, I think now, let's just say back in the day, if I, when I was in school and stuff, and someone got rude to me and I, I decided to hit them, Mm. I would never do that now because I know, you know, the consequences of actually hitting someone can actually do to, you know, like in my my future, my life, you know, I could hurt someone so much, you know, I could hit them, the head could hit the concrete, you know, that they're dead, it's not a, a normal punch, they, they could smack their head and die. It just changes so much and I think kids nowadays, if you, if you enjoy fighting, if you enjoy stuff like this, why don't you go just go to a gym? Mm -hmm. Why don't you just course, go to boxing? Yeah. You can, you know, tone your skills, become someone, you know, make something out of it. If you really enjoy fighting that much, then... Make it your living, make it your dream, make it your hobby. What's boxing taught you the most? What's the biggest lesson you've gained from boxing? Boxing taught me that stay humble. Stay humble. Humble, humility is a very good thing in life. You know, you should always stay humble no matter what you win. There's boxers out there who have won world titles, but they carry themselves, you know, with so much respect. And that's one thing that every person should carry themselves with respect and should be always be humble about your achievements. Shouldn't be going around boasting it. Nowadays, you know, People have a fight in the streets and they're going around saying, oh, I did this and I did that. You should never do that. Have you ever, like, thought about a plan B? Because obviously, you know, yeah, you've got your gifts and you've got your yeah. ambitions. But, you know, unfortunately, life doesn't work the way we want it to. Yeah. So have you ever thought about a life out of boxing? Like, yeah, what always, you would do differently yeah. if you don't go yeah. in, as a pro or yeah. don't go any further right now? I've always thought about that because my family have always said that. You need because, a plan B. Because uh, look, look what happened to my brother. There was no plan B there. You know, mistakes yeah. happen. So, so my family, I'm very lucky to have, you know, good people around you. Best parents and the best elder brothers, they're always telling me, you know what, 
need, need a plan B in it because anything could happen. I could get injured. I could. I don't be able to box again. And I'm, I'm very. I'm look, not, I look at Cash for Rook, for example. Yeah, he's not box anymore. But um, education wise, yeah, I would say I'm smart. I got good grades and stuff. I, I, I do want to go uni. Uh, but uh, I wanted to take, where it was, was I wanted to take a gap year because I knew this championship was coming up and I knew this was going to be my last one with that head, with head guard and I knew like, you know what, I've, I've got to make this count. Mm -hmm. So I decided, you know what, let me just take a gap year and let me just put everything into this and see how it goes. I took the gap year and I won now. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would want to go back to university, probably study something like, I was really good at law in college, which is a bit weird, <laughs> but yeah. It's like, like Tokyo as well, isn't it? He's yeah. a, he's a, he's a he's yes, yes, yes. Yes. So runs in the family, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, literally. Shout out Spartans Law, by the yeah. way. You know, I, I respect that. The fact yeah. that, how old are you right now? You're what? 18, 20, 19. And you've already got like a plan B in your head. Like when yeah. I was your age, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. Like it was, I, I, when I was young, I wanted to become an actor. Yeah. And then after becoming an actor, I wanted to open my own business. And after opening my own business, I was in and out of jobs, left, right, and center. I don't know what you want to do at a young age. And it was up until the age of 23, 24, I thought about having a career doing this. So I went but, to university. But, but it's okay, you know, you can take your time. You know, everyone's different 100%. in life. So nowadays, is you see social media and stuff, and people people have got jobs and, you know, fancy cars at the age mm -hmm. of 19, 20. But that's not you. That's not your life. Exactly. You, you've got your own path, and you've got your own role to play in your own life. One thing I will say is about, you know, when... You, I think it's an Asian mentality. Oh, you need to, you need to do something when you're young. You but it's, to it's total. I got my degree when I was 27 years old. Yeah. And listen, I'm not going to boast about my degree. Anybody can get a degree. Yeah. But if I left high school, college without nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I worked in my brother's business at a very young age. Okay. I was working six, seven days a week for about three, four years. Wasn't hardly making yeah. any money, but you do it for tail pack family, right? And then after my brother's business, I had, I had no direction where I wanted to go. And then I realized this was my passion. Let me do something in this. Went to university, met some great people, traveled, you know, did brilliant things. That's what life is about. That, and it doesn't matter how, how late in life you start, as long as yeah. you do something in if life is doing, all that matters. If you're doing something you're passionate about and you love them, it mm. doesn't matter how long it takes. You could be 30 trying to still achieve that dream. Just keep going. Me and you both live in Luton, but we know how difficult it's been to live in Luton over the last few years yes. the crime's been bad and unfortunately one of the biggest eye openers was that young kid that lost his life yeah. outside of Chorney why Why do you think Luton's gone so I know it happens all over, it England, happens all over England but why but yeah. do you think Luton is as bad as it is today do you know what it is the education system I'm not gonna I don't know that much about it but you know schools they don't really they don't really help you as much with school have, they don't help you with what path you actually want to do in life they just help you about you know they give you maths and English and science but they no kid actually in school probably knows what they want to do in life till it's too late and you know they don't want to do education and instead of you know going college they want to do drugs or something because that's, that's what money is you know these kids these boys at a younger age they see these older lot in fancy cars nice money you know with these new watches and stuff like that and they'd be like i want that what's stopping me from getting that and then they just go down a bad route and it's, it's quite you know it's quite common in looting especially now with knife crime and drugs and everything and it's just sad it's sad to see especially that boy who got stabbed outside Chorney he mm. wasn't even involved like that and it's one of it's the saddest bad, things it? ever it's mad the then this is ever. this is something that's happening a lot in Chorney now obviously I'm, I'm I'm 32 years old you're a lot younger than me in my yeah. days we never had social media we never yeah. had Instagram we never had TikTok but what we, what our version of going out for the days on the weekend or during the holidays was go to the park take a uh, football, a football. A cricket bat and just sit there for four or five hours and then wake up the next day and do it again. Do you think social media has played a part? Social an, an, media, yeah, it does play a part because you see things and so, some of the things you see that are not even true, but you still see it and you let it influence you. Like, with the little things as well, like there's boys out there who probably go on Instagram, they see, they see so much stuff on Instagram, you know, and they think, I want that as well. How mm -hmm. can I get that? I, I don't do education. I'm not smart. I don't want to go down this route. So how do I go down this route? I do other stuff on the streets. And they just end up going that way, even though they don't mean to, they don't intend to. They obviously they probably just want you know money or something, but they end up going down there and ends up just going bad, and it's just sad. You know, I go back to the point when I was like your age. We had like uh, youth clubs, um, yeah, like these local community centers that were doing like indoor football and stuff. You don't get that much these days. You don't get that much, yeah. Is that something we need to like revert back to? Yeah, I back think, yeah. 
But do you think people, do you think younger kids would be interested in that? Because as you said, I know I would be. I would definitely yeah. have to go back to a Someone uh, told me the five aside to him, I'd be running there. Hundred percent. Yeah, even but though I'm not good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not that good either. But do you think like we need to revert back to that? To the old ways, bring back yeah. like community think, centers and youth. Yeah, schools. but it needs to they need to target kids when they're younger. Mm. You know, when they when they just join in high school and stuff, target them there because that's when they actually you know they're learning, they're growing up now. That's it should be programmed into their heads then, not when they're sixteen. You can't drag a sixteen and a seventeen year old to a youth club and tell them to do this and do that. He's gonna, he's gonna tell you shut your mouth. I'm not doing this. I don't obviously apart from nieces and nephews and yourself, I don't really hang around with like young youngsters anymore yeah. these days. Obviously working, you know, I've got a family at home and whatnot, but what's what's the attitude and the mindset like of the youngsters these days? It's just, just it gets worse, you know. People they just wanna not to really explain it, but there's no one really cares about education as much anymore. Which, which is, is a massive shame. Which is a massive shame because obviously education is such a big thing in your life. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people have, you know, shied away from it because that's not what they want to do. They're not taught like at school. Like if someone wants to do doesn't want to do education, then what should they do? But school never teaches you that. School just teaches you, you know, what do maths and English and science and do one of them in uni and do that and do that do, and get a degree. Because of obviously a lot of knife crime in Luton and because of a lot of gang troubles as well in Luton, do you think we should bring boxing into education? Yes, boxing I think would be one of the best things for education. Boxing classes because you you actually learn so much. You might think you're invincible on the streets and no one can touch you, but I'm telling you, as soon as you get in the ring, you just someone your age, maybe even probably lighter than you could just and who's trained in boxing could give it to you. Do you know? Do you know the worry I have with that is I don't. I, I'm all for it, but yeah. I use an example. You've obviously seen Karate Kid and Cobra Kai, right? Yeah, I've seen Karate Kid, not Cobra Kai. Yeah. Watch Cobra Kai; it's good. Yeah, Mister Miyagi says Karate should be uh, used for self-defense only. Yeah, that's how it should be. But boxing also should be used for self-defense. Self-defense only, right? only. Yeah, every person should know how to, you know, defend but themselves in. Cause because of how bad the youngsters are these days, do you think they'll see it that way, or do you think they'll take it a totally different way? Whereas in I've had five, six boxing lessons. I can throw a jab in a combination. Some people would see it as that way, but you know, once you start learning from it, you know, discipline, everything teaches you. Like I know boys who, at first when they started boxing, they thought, yeah, I'm, I'm the man. They thought, yeah, I'm actually really good at this. But once you get put into you know, a couple of sparring sessions, you get beaten up a bit, you, you humble yourself. Like I remember sparring when I, when I first sparred, I, I sparred some. I was 14 at the sparred. I sparred like a 21 year old. And I got beaten up. I was beating up bad, and I, just, I remember going home thinking, I'm not even that good. It, it, it does humble you, and kids nowadays, they, they do need to be humble to a certain degree because you can't go around walking the streets like you're a god. Like, you mm -hmm. can, you know, you can hurt whoever you want, you can stab whoever you want. It shouldn't be like that. It should be taught, like, you know, you can't do that. Obviously, um, looting itself, there's so much trouble there these days. Yeah. What can local, like, local MPs, you know, the people that we look up to the most in our communities, you know, what can these people do to help the younger generation? What, what, what do you think is the right path to take with the younger generation? Honestly, i got no clue. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what they should be doing is try to help these kids at a younger age, you know, because kids growing up, they don't know what they want to do in life. There's, there's pressure at home, obviously. You've got your family. You want to be something for your family at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You want to get money. You want to be this person. Everyone's got dreams of being a millionaire and having all this, but sometimes... If I, if you're not smart, you're not smart. What can you do? Can't really go into education, but then you don't have a backup plan, and there's there's never been a backup plan installed for them, because in education you only taught one thing, you're not taught others, and I think like these people in Luton, these higher up like the MPs and stuff, they should be trying to help kids from when they first joined like high school and stuff, when they first joined year seven and year eight, and they should know that. So these kids they know that it's okay if you don't like education. You know there's something out there else for you, but they don't. They yeah, don't they don't they like don't they don't like give you that bit of inspiration. Yeah, no inspiration. If, if you don't get good grades, there's always other yeah. options and other directions. I know some of the people like they just think if I don't get good grades, then I ain't got nothing. But yeah, it's not, it's not like that, but they're not taught anything else. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, you mentioned social media. I was watching this video the other day of this 14 year old, and like he's completely messed up at high school. He got thrown out of high school, and he started selling stuff at home. Like he made his own product, and the guy makes serious amount of money. What was the product? It was like these like sprays. I was watching on TikTok the other day. It was like these fragrances, right? Oh, okay. He started selling. He started to make money. And like, it's so obviously he, he, he was using different fragrances. <laughs> just like started getting like all the ingredients and put his own he stuff to, to make it. It's just crazy how some people could, like, 
and listen, don't get me wrong, at the age of 40, you want children to be going through the education system. Yeah. But this guy thought, well, I'm not good in school, you know, my behaviour's not good, I need to yeah. go a different route. And what he does is, he starts sending his own fragrances, yeah. and then I make a serious amount of money. And I was sat there watching it on TikTok, and I was like, this wow. is in- incredible. We wouldn't think of something like that at age. Yeah, but if your parents support you, mm. and his parents probably did support him, then why not? That's one thing that he wanted to do. And at that moment in time, he didn't have education going for him, and he thought, you know what, let me... This man's nice. Everyone likes perfume at the end of the day. He thought, you know, I can make this at home. And his parents probably supported him. Look where he is now. Exactly. If you have a good... I'm lucky to have... You know, my parents support me a lot with boxing. You know, there's a lot of people like... Like, especially me. Like, I, did, I got good grades at college. I got I got good grades. I got good GCSEs. I, I could go to uni right now. But my family... I wanted to do something because I wanted to take a risk in my life. I wanted to gamble on something. I didn't... I wanted to take a gap year to try and reach one of my goals, which I didn't get the first time, I wanted to go again. And they helped me and they said, yeah, it's fine. They were supportive, my brother's very supportive of me. And some, sometimes I feel like parents, they're not really supportive of that kids, they put a lot of pressure on their kids. But um, I'm lucky to have parents that didn't put any sort of pressure on me. And they just supported me with everything I wanted to do in terms of boxing, so winning and everything. So I'm lucky I got that. But I think that if more parents did that, the kids would be, they'd know things about the kids that they wouldn't know before. They'd know what the kids want, what's their dreams like and everything. But yeah. What's the target now? I mean, well, you've just become like national youth development champion. Yeah. People are going to say about the Olympics and fighting for Team GB and moving up to yeah. pro. But next two years are, are very crucial. Next two years. So what's, what can you tell us about what your ambition is for the next two years? What are you looking to achieve? So because now I'm going to be a senior, obviously. Right. Obviously, there's a lot more risk in that. You, you can get away with certain stuff at a uh, head guard. You, guess, you know, get away with certain shots. But, you know, if I drop my hands now and someone tries to take my head off, my head's getting taken off. <laughs> I'm going to be on the floor. But, yeah, so I've, I just want to take it slowly. I want to improve on things that I messed up and, like, you know, my style. I want to learn every single thing before I start, you know, competing again. I want to take it. I, I would have went to the Nationals in April. But, obviously, I'd be fasting then. And I can't do that. It's very difficult. The thing was, they, they normally do it in like a week. Like, you know, the quarter semi final, all these in one week. I would have done that. But they've spread it out to the whole of Ramadan. I said, like, I can't do that. I can't be, what's it called? I can't be asking Allah to help me win a fight when I'm not even fasting. Mm. So I decided, you know, I'm not going to go there. And then um, I probably will do the Harangay. I want to do the Harangay Box Cup. And I'm just going to take it from there. Hopefully, I want to go to the next season, I want to go to the elites, senior elites. And uh, yeah, I want to get to about 40, 40, 50 fights, 40, 50 amateur fights. Well, let's just say like 20, 20, 20 or 30 more, I need, I'd say. Because there's a certain time people want to turn pro. With me, I think it's when I can start implementing what I do in sparring into my fights with like no, with no nerves and everything, feel comfortable. That's when I should turn pro. But yeah, I still got, I still got a long way ahead of me. But maybe, who knows, maybe I win a couple of national titles and Team GB is asking me to take me Olympics with them. I'm not saying no to that. I'm going to be cheering you on all the way, but yeah. um, no, listen, Saki, man, whatever route you take, yeah. you've fully got my support, and I'm pretty sure the rest of the town, family, yeah. Asian community, you know, hopefully even the rest of the, everybody else in Luton, Bedfordshire will be supporting you. But yeah, Saki, listen, thank you very much for your time today, brother. Much That's appreciated. Okay. And as, again, we'll definitely be following uh, the rest of your amateur career and hopefully your professional yeah. career. Guys, make sure you give them a follow on social media. Um, links are below in the description and once again if you haven't already please subscribe like and comment and uh, make sure you turn the bell on for further lights out boxing notifications Saki Mahmood once again brother thank you very much for joining me and people thank you very much for watching podcast 46 of the lights out boxing podcast